Welcome back everybody, this is Lunardrop7 and we are going to be looking through the Book of Fables. Oh wow, there's a lot of things here. Cool, okay, let's start with us, we're just gonna go right down the... The renowned big, oh wait, big B wolf, fifth town sheriff, the renowned big bad wolf, he, no, that's not what I wanted to do. He's known for tormenting pigs and girls in red hoods, and he's trying to put those dark days behind him. Big B now acts as the fable town sheriff and remains in his human form, mostly, however, due to his rough past, the citizens of fable town are slow to trust him. He is determined to show that he's truly changed, but some instincts are just too hard to control. And sorry guys, when, <coughs> when I read, I sometimes trip over my words and everything. She may seem cold, but this stems from her life of mistreatment and abuse back in the homelands after escaping assault and imprisonment, not to mention an attempt on her life. She married Prince Charming. Wasn't long before Snow discovered that Charming cheated on her with her estranged sister, Rose Red, and she divorced him. After the exodus, I'm, uh, I'm assuming this is we are, how we were like, kicked out of the homelands, which I have no idea how that happened, but... She focused her attention to setting up a safe haven for fables in the new world. She now serves as assistant to the deputy mayor of Fabletown. Man, they all have their hands on their hips. Look at this. Oh. It, that kind of counts. The woodsman, fallen hero. He is one of the few men who went toe to toe with Biz Big B in his black forest days and lived to tell a tale in an attempt to save Little Red Riding Hood. He split the great wolf's belly open with his axe, filled him full of rocks, and threw the beast into a river. To his dismay, his popularity has faded. Even his name is forgotten. He is known only as the woodsman. <laughs> Faith, donkey skin girl. Kind of also dead, but Faith, other known, otherwise known as the Donkey Skin Girl, made it through the Exodus from the magical homelands with the clothes on her back, her husband, and nothing else. She was once a beautiful princess, happily married to Prince Lawrence of a neighboring kingdom. Her life should have been a happy, should have had a happy ending, but the mundane city of New York wasn't kind to her or her marriage. With no money, she found herself tuning tricks to make a, the rent for a cheap apartment on the outskirts of Fable Town. She had a difficult life but she did what she could to survive in an unfamiliar world. And she is also now dead. So that works. Okay, next one. Beauty, caring wife. <clears throat> she and her husband Beast once lived in an enchanted castle, but they were forced to flee the homelands in the Exodus, leaving all of their wealth behind. Now they live in a modest studio in Fabletown, New York. Though times are hard, with Beast multi working multiple jobs to pay the bills, the couple could have the longest lasting relationship of all the fables. I like, I like your earrings. Concerned husband. <laughs> this is a little understatement, but okay. He and his wife, Beauty, left everything behind when they escaped the homelands in the Exodus without his former wealth. Excuse me. Without his former wealth, Beast must pitch, pick up extra work to make ends meet. He is able to get around Fable Town without a glamour most of the time, but if he gets too angry, if Beauty gets too angry with him, he becomes more beastly by the minute, growing horns and large teeth. Despite the occasional bickering, they are truly in love and have the longest lasting relationship of anyone in Fable Town. Mr. Toad Slum Ohees. Not happy. His pants come up with really high, too. He's the superintendent for a defunct tenement on the, ta on the edge of ta Fable Town proper. Wow, I swear I'm not dyslexic. Because he's a three and a half foot talking amphibian, he is required by Fable Town law to keep his family and himself magically glamoured to appear human. The problem is Toad isn't too concerned with what the law is and has to be reminded often. <laughs> I forgot about you. Colin, couch surf. <laughs> Colin is better known as one of the little three little pigs back in the homelands. They were harassed by the big bad wolf who blew down Colin's house of straw. Okay, so you were the stupid one who had the house of straw. You, sh you should be dead. Didn't he eat them? Or I guess they just ran away in this. There's so many versions. I have to, I don't know which ones they follow. Because some of them, he ate the pigs. Some of them, they just ran to the guy with the brick house. After the exodus, Khan and the other fables who couldn't pass for human were sent to live at the farm in upstate New York. Unable to stand such a boring life, he constantly makes trips down to Fable Town to bother Bigby. He is always caught and sent back to the farm, but that doesn't let him stop. Ichabod. Hoo-hoo. 
Hailing from the haunted town of Sleepy Hollow, Ichabod Crane has been deputy mayor of Fabletown for nearly 115 years. He is a bundle of nerves and takes his job very seriously, though that doesn't mean he always does it well. As one of Fabletown's elite, he is often blind to the troubles of the less well-off citizens. Overall, he is authoritarian, cowardly, and always hiding something. Well, yeah, we know that now. Buffkin. <laughs> you doing to your tail there? <laughs> Easy. Fabletown librarian. Oh, okay, he's from Oz. He's a talking winged monkey from the land of Oz. Now as Fable Town's librarian, he spends his time reading and stealing the deputy mayor's booze. He's prone to mischief, so when something goes wrong, he'll assume he'll... So when something goes wrong, he assumes he'll receive the lion's share of the blame. He's helpful when he wants to be, but most of the time he'd rather be drinking. Somebody would have fired him a long time ago, but he's the only one who can make sense of the filing system. And his wings even, like, reach over. Oh, Fable Town. Fabletown is a community located on Bullfinch Street in Manhattan's Upper West Side to regular people or Mondays. It appears to be an ordinary New York neighborhood, but is really the home of the fables for many worlds. And within the business office at the Woodlands lies a massive cavern, a vast library, and hundreds of magical items of immense power. All non-human fables live upstate on the farm in extension of Fabletown. The farm, Fabletown Annex. This giant pumpkins doesn't seem that bad. Then again, what do I know? The farm is home to fables who cannot pass as human, giants, goblins, animals, etc. It is located in upstate New York, far away enough from the Mondays to avoid detection. Detection. All, some of its residents resent their confinement to the farm despite its size and comforts. To them, the farm is a prison. They would be allowed to leave a farm if they could purchase a glamour, but many don't have the money for something so expensive, although some, like Collins, sneak out to the city anyways. Mondays non-fables short for mundane thank you monday is a catch-all term that fables use to refer to the non-magical inhabitants of their adopted home wording spells placed around wording spells placed around for the blocks and fable town and the farm keep their minds distracted and dull with the Within certain boundaries, however, if anything should pike the curiosity or scrutiny of a large group of Mondays, these magical protection charms would overload and fail. As sheriff of Fabletown, one of Big Meat's primary functions is ensuring the Fabletown community maintains a low profile. Oh my god, how many of are these left? I'm on glam. I'm not even close. I'm just here. Ugh. Glamours, disguise spell glamours, are spells that allow the user to change their appearance. They are expensive and can be purchased by non-human fables in order to pass for human among the Mondays. Cheap glamours can be found in the seedier parts of Fable Town, but they are often unreliable and prone to sudden failure. Yep, that's a good before and after shot. He kind of messed up the order. Prince Lawrence. Apparently he could have lived. I really wish he could have lived. After escaping the homelands, Prince Lawrence and his wife Faith immediately fell victim to the harsh realities of the mundane world. They moved to New York hoping to find aid in a community of fellow fables, but without enough money to live in Fable Town, they had to settle in an apartment on the outskirts of the neighborhood. Unfortunately, that meant that they were out of sight and out of mind when it came to government assistance. The prospects dwindling, Faith left Lawrence to try to make it on her own. Now, without his wife for support, he struggles to motivate himself and quickly sunk into depression. The Tweedles. Which is. Th this is D and Dumb, right? God, Toes, right? He's stripping down the Johnny's toe, which is worse. The Tweedle brothers, Dumb and D, are thugs for hire. They appear human, allowing them to carry out their contacts in the Monday world without drawing suspicion. They are as inseparable as they are ruthless. Holly. Oh, they show her without her glamour. Oh, cool. She's even got some. Coming out of her cheeks there. That's neat. Look at that. Cool. She's the non she is a no nonsense kind of troll and the owner of the trip trap bar. She's glamoured to a pure human, but her patrons know better. Holly takes good care of her regulars, often the downtrodden fables with little to spare, but she has no patience for the Fable Town government that has done nothing to locate her missing sister, who is now dead. Ooh, cool. See he looks really cool without his glamour. I'm not even kidding. Dude, I, what's, what fable is he from? If anybody knows, please tell me. Grendel just wants to be left alone. In the old day, he terrorized Norse Mead Halls. But lately, he can be found occupying a stool in various quiet, dumpy bars around New York. He hates the noise of the city, but must work there to afford his glamour. 
Despite his gruff bearing, he's fiercely loyal to those who lean learn to offer him the space and silence he deserves. Talking to him is like watching a time bomb tick down. It's only a matter of time. Dude, he is so cool without his glamour. Bluebeard, wealthy scoundrel. Wish I could like rotate them. He managed to escape the homelands with his riches intact. I have no idea how he managed that. And continues to be one of the wealthiest fables in New York. The Fable Town government depends on his generous contributions and he often uses his influence for his own benefit. As a formal serial killer, a why did we not suspect this guy? He claims his days of decapitating his brides. Okay, that would really make you a prime sub suspect. If we didn't already know who it was, I would really think it was you. Serial killer decapitating women, yeah. And even if he was able to leave his violent ways in the homelands, that hasn't stopped him from making the occasional trip down Crooked Lane, which I have no idea what that is. Hopefully there's... Hmm? Okay. And the big... In the days leading up to the Exodus, the Big Bad Wolf hunted armies of men and goblins in the Black Forest. These invading forces had driven off the great beasts, preferred, preferred quarry, and their own flesh was rotten with corruption, hardly a suitable replacement. He made it his game to destroy their camps, to devour their night watchmen, and disrupt their supply trains while sparing their prisoners. One day he broke their ranks and discovered a particular woman they had captive, oh, Snow White. Her hair is darker than the sky. He approached her, and she, knowing no sword could match the giant wolf's power, bravely placed her shackles in the wolf's mouth, beast's mouth, whatever. He freed her, but years have passed before the two men again in the Monday world. Mercy. Okay, that's no more mercies. No, a lot of people have mercy. After a long line of marriages resulting in mysterious disappearances, his last wife in the homelands was naturally suspicious of him. One day he departed on business, leaving her alone in his estate. He gave her free reign of all the rooms, but made her promise not to open the closet on the ground floor. She defied him, of course, and discovered the location of his missing wives. <gasps> oh, I got that all in my breath. When he returned, he knew he must kill her before he, she revealed his murderous secret. <coughs> She persuaded him to allow her a moment to pray, which he reluctantly granted. This small mercy gave her brothers time to arrive and rescue her, and his crimes were exposed. He doesn't look happy about it. 13th floor. Thirteenth floor of the Woodland Building is home to a group of witches and wizards tasked with the protection of Fable Town. They use their powers to keep the community hidden from prying Monday eyes, but all magic has its limits and every spell has its cost. The Witching Well. I've heard about this before, I do believe. The Witching Well is located in a chamber inside the woodland buildings where it is used to dispose of things ne never to be seen again. Dead fables are committed to its de depths as are the most unredeemable crimo criminals. I can't, oh, I can't, I can't, I don't, I just got home today. I shouldn't be doing this. No one is entirely sure what lies at the bottom of the well, nor indeed if it has a bottom at all, but it's widely assumed to be the passageway to the final resting place. Jack Horner, harmless trickster. He's harmless, but he's irritating as all get out. He's always up to something, but he's not nearly as smart as he thinks he is. He plans to get rich quick off and backfire. His plans to get rich quick off and backfire, but his confidence never wavers. He thinks he's the most important person. Everyone knows this is harmless. <laughs> Lily. Oh, you've really got to show it like that, huh? Thanks. Lily and her sister Holly grew up in the homelands together, but had a falling out shortly after moving to the mundane world. Aimless and increasingly destitute, Lily turned to prostitution, and now she's the second victim of an ongoing murder investigation. Troll cross. Oh, cool. Like... I didn't get to look at this thing up close. This is cool. A troll class is a cross is an amulet made of iron that is No, she said it was made of copper. It was foolishly thought to protect the wearer from trolls. Lily acquired hers while wandering through the wilderness looking for something to eat. She came across a human, but before she could devour him, he held the troll cross out and shouted back, back you troll. After enjoying her tasty snack, she plucked the cross from the dead man's hands. After ex the exodus, she wore the troll cross constantly as a reminder of better days. Georgie Porchy. <laughs> I do not like you. 
Georgie runs a pudding and pie, a strip club that also caters to the unmentionable desires of Sabletown's Fable Town citizens. He has tried just about everything there is to try in the pursuit of worldly pleasures, but none of it satisfies him for long. He does seem to enjoy pushing people's buttons. He takes pride in his nightclub and doesn't react at all to anyone meddling in his affairs. Clever Hans, bouncer, janitor, handyman. Is this Hans Solo? It's not Hans Solo. There's no way. I mean, we're talking fables, not Star Wars. All right. He's Clever Hans, always does exactly as he's told. However, he often misunderstands his instructions and ends up hurting himself or behaving oddly, as in the case of his noted fable where he threw sheep's eyes at his wife. Hmm. Now he works as a bouncer at Georgie's club. He hopes to dance on stage one day, but for now he's content sweeping up and making sure the crowd doesn't get out of hand. That's funny. Nerissa. I like your flower. Nerissa's story never had a happy ending. She's known as the Little Mermaid, but the Little Mermaid was named Ariel, wasn't she? A young girl who gave up her tail for a pair of legs in the hopes of winning the heart of a handsome prince when she married a prince... Uh, when he married a princess instead, she left heartbroken. I guess this is a different mermaid. She made the jury to the mundane world, hoping for a better life. Now she dances at the pudding and pie, but each step she takes feels like she's walking on shards of glass. Yeah, that was... Ow, God. I heard about that, too. That was in there, too. She... Yeah, ouch. Ugh. She has very little left, but signs some com comfort in the company of her fellow... Is that it? Yes. Oh, God. I was really, really running out of breath. That did not take long at all, but it was I'm out of breath. I guess I missed some. I missed some. Hmm. I'm gonna have to, uh... I have to figure out what I left. Player choices. I gave her my money, told him the truth. Nobody else told him the truth, huh? Where'd you go first? I want to help Toad. I did not prevent his death. Who's your prime suspect? I did think it was Prince Loris, but I guess nobody else did. I'm just really looking at these. Ignore them, da da da. Da da da. Key. Okay. And I don't care to. Okay, so uh, next video I will continue with what episode three now. So okay, see you guys in the next.